let's take a look at what is on the menu for the riders today. The longest version of Paris-Roubaix fan that we've seen so far. The riders race out of Devant. It's a race of 148 and a half kilometers today. Along the way for the riders, 17 sectors of Parve. Two very long sections, two five-star sections the riders will face. In total, the riders will face 29.2 kilometers of the bone-shattering parve that this race throws up. And then it's all for at the race into the Roubaix Double Grove to complete 148 and a half kilometers of racing. The race uh, rolled out at 1.35 in the afternoon. A neutralized section of racing before everything got underway properly. 56, 60 kilometers per hour, so it's not going to be straightforward or easy, but that's the way we like it. Yeah, exactly, but uh, along the way is pushing the riders all the way to Roubaix. The average speed is just a touch under 40 kilometers an hour so far, and it's just going to get more and more tense. You've got to be very careful to, be to take to the path on the side, don't you? Because the rules of the UCI say take to the pathway, you're disqualified. On to sector 16. Remember today we're going to go through 17 sectors and they're going to count down. So we're in uh, Valan Abrion. This is a 2.4 kilometre sector. Mariana Voss using her cyclocross skills to great effect as the back wheel kicked and Voss accelerated so hard to come across. Off sector 15. And big attack from Alison Jackson. The defending champions had two crashes today and decide, right, let's try and mix it up a little bit. So she goes on the move. An immediate reaction from Ellen van Dijk. Martelak also there from Ceratizit WNT. And you can just see as soon as the junction was made by that chasing group, Anthony, Alison Jackson sensed her move, sensed the opportunity to go. And she thought, I want to be back in control of this race. I want to be in the position I was in last year. Along the way for the riders today, there are six three-star sectors of this particular challenge for each of these moves that we go on to. Just taking a look, it looks like a different team coming to the front now. They accelerate hard and put a rider on the front. They put a rider on the front, but they also have one of their riders on the wheel, another rider moving up. So they've, within that top 10, Team DSM Firminic Post and Al have three riders. And once again, it's Rikaeli Barbieri who's at the front. She's got Pfeiffer Georgie there. And look at this. Lotta Kopecki comes to the front, a big acceleration. Pfeiffer Georgie responds, as does Schweinberger. And it's the same three riders every single time up towards the front when you've got this key acceleration. And it's not only about this sector, Anthony, as you start to see riders really grappling for position, trying to get into their rhythm to try and close the gap as now we start to see a select group go because coming up, the sector after this is the first five-star sector, and that's Mons and Pavel. Well, it's lots of Kopecky is causing problems for everybody. So Kopecky goes with Schweinberger, with Pfeiffer Georgie, Mariana Voss, and on the back is Lorena Wiebes. This is a very, very dangerous move in this Paris-Roubaix fam avec Swift because the world champion is putting on the pressure. Lorena Surely. Wiebes is cracking here. She's, She's on the oh. radio. Oh, she is on the radio. So there's a problem here. Maybe it's a puncture. And that's not good news for SD Works because it leaves Lotta Kopecky without a teammate. She needs to try and get to the end of this sector. Then she can have a tyre change because you can see she was immediately onto that move, Anthony, of Lotta Kopecky. Mariana Voss now is the right taking this race on. On her wheel is Lotta Kopecky, Pfeiffer Georgie and Schweinberger of the team of Phoenix de Koenig. Livalula Jaco also are not represented, so they need to try and get some riders up towards the front. He swings across. Let's take a look here. Problem for Loretta Hansen. Needle Trek's race is suddenly having all sorts of issues. It's almost turning on the head, isn't it? They've gone from a, a moment where they had 
strength in numbers. They were the driving force. Ellen van Dijk was the rider who was putting everyone to the sword, everyone under pressure. Also Grace, Grace Brown, Brown with a front wheel puncture. She can't go anywhere here, Grace Brown. She's just trying to hold on to the end of this sector. She how the process plays out, how the race unfolds. As we see a general regroupment on this five-star sector and almost a crash at the back of that group. Lorena Weebis, I think, has fought her way back in here. Also in the group, uh, Hannah, is Elise Shabby, who is riding here for the team of Canyon Trap. Liv Alula Jaco have got cards to play in here, but they're being very clever in the way that they're not getting involved in much of the pacemaking. They are just sitting on the back. Yeah, being clever. Oh, but big attack. Massive attack. Left-hand side. Lotta Kopecki has come off the cobbles and decided we're going to attack now on this little climb. What a move by the world champion. Brilliant move. Straight off the cobbles. And again, you can see from that camera shot, Anthony, just how it rises. Kopecki takes a look over the shoulder. What is the damage? What has she done to this peloton? She sits up a little bit, but that was a real wake-up call for this peloton here. Only a couple of riders were able to respond, but again, it's left half of that group chasing. They're having to use vital energy, vital um, reserves in the legs. Maybe just seeing who's still awake, who is responsive, who do I need to beat? There was 11 riders who latched onto that attack. Sometimes for Kopecki, because you saw that big, big attack, and actually it's amounted to nothing. It's all come back together. East last year, that larger breakaway, staying away, and the, the big favourites couldn't reel them back in. Whereas this year, it's, it's a case of riders going out the back as opposed to going off the front. It's incredibly difficult on, on this edition. And I think primarily down to the wind conditions and that it's been majority of, of the day, it's been a, a tailwind or indeed a crosswind. But I think many teams, they know that they have to be so far towards the front that they can't risk to let a breakaway go. And they want to be in control. They want to be in, in this front, uh, front position. Point Thibault, onto this one, three-star sector. And now, oh, big crash right-hand side. Terrible day for human-powered health. Romy Casper has got herself back into this group, back into the front of the race, and right at the start of this sector, she's into the ditch. Big, big shame for Human Powered Health and Romy Casper. Magnus Backstead has thought, let's go with an experienced rider as we get a big move on the right-hand side and another attack from the team of Lidl Trek, and it's Ellen van Dijk who starts to up the tempo again. Straight onto the move once again, it's Christina Schweinberger, the former Austrian champion. Latching onto that is Kim Lecourt of AG Insurance Sudal. She just takes a little look over her right hand shoulder and another rider who has found herself out the back of this leading group. She's come back. Also moving up is a big attack from the right hand side and Lorena Wiebes gets involved in a big move from the team of EF again. Wiebes onto the wheel will probably calm down a little bit as Tiffany Cromwell and the rest of the Canyon Tram team bring this up. Gazy was the rider who tried to make a move. And this is the area where we saw Lisa Longa Borghini attack last year. Bearing in mind it's a one star and then a two star, it was an interesting place for Elisa Longa Borghini to make her move that ultimately won her the race last season. This is Jade Wheel. Former French champion. You can see the tricolor colours around the sleeves of this jersey. As again, we've got the volunteers and helpers. Jade Wheel goes to this next sector, a little acceleration. As we go past the windmill, of which there are many. This is the sector number eight, 500 metres now, and Jade Wheel attacks really hard. Also in this group, who we haven't talked about yet, Susanna and oh big attack at the front. Kopecki goes on the move again. Another big move by the world champion as they came out of that turn and Mariana Voss was immediately trying to jump onto the wheel. Look how much this race is stretched. One long line with 31.3 kilometers of racing to go. 
Little quartet, maybe five riders, trying to go across to Jade Wheel now, led by the world champion. Jade Wheel is already on sector six, and right underway under Borgel Awanan. This is a three-star sector. This is 1.1 kilometers rumbling through the dust. It looks like this breakaway is going to be nullified with 23, maybe 23 kilometers of racing to go. Jade Wheel out the saddle. Still Marta Lack playing her cards very close to her chest. And she's had a large part of this race where she's been without assistance, without any team for fuel, for some nutrition, a gel, a bottle. And so now she's really paying the price of that. So while she's still here, as Van Dyke, she gets across. And now Amber Crack makes a move. Two to it. time trialists off the front. 50k an hour as they try to go clear. Amber Crack looks across, Ellen Van Dyke will want to work, and Wiesman Lisa Bike need to close this up. And they need to do it quickly, because you do not want two riders like this going up the road. And cleverly, Wiesman Lisa Bike look across at Lotta Kopecky and tell the world champion to close it. And Balsamo is right on the wheel of Lotta Kopecky with Suzanne Anderson and making the world champion do the work doing recons of this sector and so it's slippery in some of the corners too but it's a roaring tailwind the team though that will be in the ascendancy is going to be Lidl Trek because they've got Balsamo and they've got Ellen Van Dyke at the front of this race Amber Crack decides to go and look for a bit more smooth road Mariana Voss now leads the trio we're going to have five leaders with 18 and a half kilometers to go we're going to have Ellen Van Dijk and Amber Crack joined by Mariana Voss, Lotta Kopecky and Elisa Balsamo. This race is coming together with five really big top name riders at the front. Georgie, what a terrible moment for DSM Ferminet post NL. Herself and Franzi Koch looking strong all day and a little bit of a tangle, a bit of road furniture, and Parry Rube Famavic Swift comes completely unfurled for them. Five leaders. We have two more sectors to go before the Rube Velodrome. Voss, Crack, Kopecky, and Van Dyke lead from a chasing duo of Pfeiffer Georgie and Balsamo. Van Dyke now says, Think I'm going to do some work? You're joking. I'm not going to work anymore because Balsamo is coming across. 48 kilometers an hour. This is playing out to the groups behind now, Hannah. It is, but this is only going to add coal to the fire of Kopecky. That move there from Van Dyke with us shrugging the shoulders and saying, well, I'm not going to work. I've got a teammate behind. That's going to make Kopecky roar. And she's going to think, okay, if you're not going to work, you're not going to give me a turn. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make it difficult for Balsamo to come back. I'm going to make sure I'm going to beat you. 11.4 kilometers to go. Mariana Voss, Lotte Kopecky, Elisa Bauer, and another big attack from Ellen Van Dyke. Another move from the Lidl Trek rider, which again is unusual because she knows Balsamo is suffering terribly and has only just got back on. And immediately Van Dyke attacks. Onto the wheel goes Voss, Kopecky, Amber Crack. A rerun of last year where we had the group of riders who were out front and the chasing group of favourites, whereas this year it's almost role reversal. The favourites are in the front group and it's those chases behind. At this very point, it was striking distance. It was such a slender advantage for the leaders, but they managed to hold on. Yeah, last it's year we had that sprint of six and a sprint of six. And it's interesting behind that there's certain riders who don't want to work. As soon as Evie Copers made that attack there, no one wanted to work with her. She, you know, she turned around and said, help me. If we want to try and get back into this group, you don't have teammates in this front group. Let's work together and try and bring them back. And right now, Kopecky has that full overview. She shakes the legs out. A shake of the legs of the world champion just to make sure she feels good. Balsamo now is starting to look much, much better. She's a former world champion. This season, she's been on top form. She's one of the fastest sprinters in the world. She's beaten Kopecky. Voss, though, has also won races this year. And Van Dyke has decided, let's keep it away. And now let's get Balsamo to win this race. You've got six riders in this group. Three of them have all been track world champions or current track world champions in Kopecky. Balsamo's been a world champion on the track. 
Voss has been a world champion on the track. And so here, when they come into this velodrome, as they're onto this final sector here, 300 meters, a very different type of parve. They're going to know what it's like to ride on this velodrome, how to ride the bankings, how to get that free speed. Let's see how this plays out. What a finish this is going to be. 1,200 meters to go. The riders are going to make their way into the velodrome in this Paris-Roubaix Famavic Swift. It's been an intriguing race. Dominated now by this six rider breakaway with Lotta Capecchi, the world champion. Mariana Voss, former world champion. Elisa Balsamo, former world champion. Alan Van Dijk, former world time trial champion. Pfeiffer Georgie, British champion. Amber Crack is the unknown in this little group, but she's won a race this year. And the crowd get on their feet as Ellen Van Dyke now gets set to try and give Elisa Balsamo the win in Paris-Roubaix Famavic Swift, because they've won it twice, Lidl Trek, and they're looking to do it again. One lap of racing to go. Amber Crack just trying to come round on the right-hand side over the top of these riders. Now Pfeiffer Georgie takes a look over her right-hand shoulder and it's all keeping together. But Kopecki is slightly boxed in here. She's trying to find a way out and she's not going to be able to find a way. She's going to have to come the long way round. And can she get herself out of this position? Let's see how it's going to go. Pfeiffer Georgie is on the front. Big move of Balsamo. Kopecki is in a box. Balsamo makes a move, Mariana Voss, Elisa Balsamo, Kopecki comes flying around the outside, Mariana Voss is in the inside, Kopecki is desperately trying to get there, is it going to be a world champion win? It's going to be Rainbow Bands world champion, Lotta Kopecki. Wow. The first world champion to win, Paris Roubaix fam, Avex Swift. She found her way through, and Lotta Kopecki finally adds Paris Roubaix fam to her palmares. FC Works Pro Time get the race they're missing. Here comes the sprint. There's a number of riders just in front. Lorena Wiebes punches the air. Her teammate has taken the win. Wiebes wins the bunch sprint. Lotta Kopecki, it looked like things were not going her way. It was a neck and neck sprint between Mariana Voss on the inside and on the outside Elisa Balsamo but suddenly Kopecki got herself out of the box that she was in and then she went flying towards the finish. Rainbow Bands world champion, she wins in the velodrome. Lotta Kopecki wins in three hours 47 minutes 13 seconds. In second place is Elisa Balsamo of Lidl Trek. In third is the British champion fight for Georgie, who just pips Mariana Voss for fourth. Behind them, the breakaway, Amber Crack and Ellen Van Dyke with Weebis winning the bunch sprint. Lute, Here she is. You used to win a lot of races, but this one is quite special. That's Paris-Roubaix Femme. That's monumental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was the goal of the season. So, um, yeah, then to also do it is, um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, the, how much confidence the team gave me um, actually already the whole season, but especially last week. Um, my teammates tried to make me love the last two days as much as possible. And just, I mean, I could just really feel how much they believed in, in me being able to, to win this race. And then, yeah, they did an amazing job. And then having Lorena Wiebes in the end uh, in the second group was, yeah, was for me maybe the key. Can you tell us how it happens on the velodrome? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's always nervous. I mean, uh, you're here with yeah, two very fast sprinters like uh, Vos and uh, Balsamo, so yeah, you're never sure. But um, one moment I thought, yeah, now I, I, I'm boxed in. But I had to start their sprint pretty early and uh, yeah, I just, uh, I could keep, keep sprinting. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Lots of Kopecky. As she said, boxed in, but it all came together. She found her way out, and as Hannah mentioned on the run-in, a world champion on the track knows how to find her way around the track. Great performance by SD Works today. For all your cycling content year-round, subscribe to NBC Sports' YouTube page. We got it all.